championships of the world on the line against the undisputed super welterweight champion of the world, Jermel Charlom. It's all being brought to you by Canelo Promotions and also TGB Promotions, a presentation of Premier Boxing Champions. Tickets are available. This comes your way from T-Mobile Arena. We go live on Showtime Pay-Per-View, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific Time. Tickets are going quickly. You can get them now at AXS. Dot com. But before we begin this trainer's roundtable discussing Canelo Alvarez super middleweight championship mm-hmm. title yeah, defense good. against Jermel Charlone, I want to pass mm-hmm. along my mm-hmm. thoughts and prayers to the family of longtime trainer Mike Stafford, who passed away at the age of 67. Uh, Mike Stafford, who has been very instrumental in the careers of many world champions, professional prize fighters, and also was such a a wonderful, you know, addition to the amateur scene and really was a staple when it comes to cultivating amateur boxers within the USA boxing program. You know, Mike Stafford trained the likes of Adrian Broner, Rasheed Warren, Robert Easter Jr. as well. So Jamel Herring, who was the captain of the 2012 United States Olympic team. So my thoughts and prayers go out to my family. Mike, we will miss you so much. Thank you for everything that you did. And if you ever met Mike, he was a wonderful human being. With that being said, I want to introduce the men that will be on the panel here today discussing Canelo Alvarez and Jermel Charlo. First of all, this man, I mean, I have known this man for well over a decade. He has been embroiled in the fabric of high-level prize fighting for many decades. I'm not trying to date him, but, I mean, he still looks just as young as ever, the trainer of Jermall Charlo, former trainer of Jermell Charlo, former trainer of Arislan Lara, who incidentally fought Canelo Alvarez, uh, Pernell Whitaker, also Vernon Forrest. I mean, this guy has been around the top of the game for many, many years. Please welcome the illustrious Ronnie Shields. Ronnie, how are you, my friend? I'm doing good. How are you, man? No, I'm doing fabulous. It's always great to talk to you. Uh, But, Ronnie, as we look at this fight, Canelo Alvarez, Jermel Charlo, you train Jermel. You know what Jermel's capable of. How great of an opportunity is this for Jermel Charlo, even though he's going up to weight classes, to fight Canelo Alvarez? Well, you know, this is a big opportunity for Jermel. And... It's one that I know he's not going to take lightly. You know, he's going to do everything in his power to 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 come out victorious. You know, Jamel, you know he's a he's a fighter, man. That's what he does. You know, he's one of these guys that you know he wants to be the best all the time. Since he was a young kid, he's always wanted to be the best, and he's always wanted to fight the best, and he he always wants to prove himself. And you know, so you got to take your head off. To a guy like that, you know, especially with him being the undisputed at 154 to go up two divisions to fight Canelo Alvarez at 168. I mean, that says a lot about who he is as a person and as a fighter. And, you know, I commend him for doing that. Well, looking forward to talking with you more, Ronnie, as we continue to go ahead and welcome in the illustrious trainers along with you, Ronnie. This man, the 2022 Ring Magazine Trainer of the Year, trainer of Mario Barrios, Hector Luis Garcia, Carlos Adamas, and many more. I mean, he's always got someone in his stable that's up and coming. He's got world champion. <coughs> Certainly has done a fabulous job. Please welcome Bob Santos. Bob, first of all, welcome to the panel. And and how excited are you for September 30th? Not only are you a trainer, but you love boxing. You break it down. But as we get ready for Canelo Alvarez, Jermel Charlo, uh, what are your initial thoughts on this showdown coming up on September 30th? I think it's going to be a very competitive fight. I think, you know, a lot of people are talking about Canelo's the much bigger guy, obviously. Uh, you know, uh, I had Laura with, with with Ronnie and been in his gym many times and was able to witness the Charlo brothers sparring with, with, with Laura. I've been fortunate to be in camp with Canelo up in Big Bear. 
So I've been around uh, both guys uh, quite a bit. But I think what people are missing is, it, yeah, he's going up two weight classes. But Charlo's a very big guy. He's not a small guy. I might even say he might naturally be the bigger guy than Canelo because Canelo's built his body up over time. He's very stocky. He's thick. But, uh, you know, Charlo fought at 154 pounds most of his career. We all know uh, Canelo came up from much lighter weight classes. Obviously, he was younger and his body was uh, building up over time. But I I, I think the, uh, people are missing the side of that. They keep thinking he's going up two weight classes. Yes, he is. He hasn't competed at that level. But I think physically, they're going to be very surprised. He's a big, strong guy. So I don't think he's going to have too too many problems in that area. It's just going to come down to who wants it more, who's the better guy, who can implement their plan. And and I think Canelo's just got a little bit more experience than him in that area. But as far as size go, I think they're going to be pretty damn comparable. When, Bob, we saw the press conferences in New York and Los Angeles when they were face-to-face, I'm glad you brought that up because – it's not like Pacquiao coming up from, you know, 115 up to these, you know, this massive weight. I mean, Jermel Charlo is a very big, strong, high level prize fighter. It's not like he's going up three or four weight classes. He's just naturally a big guy and happens to make 154, which is why he, a, a good reason why he's been a force along with his technical brilliance and punching power. Exactly. And a lot of people, like I said, they forget, you know, I was there when Canelo fought uh, um, Jose Cotto, Miguel Cotto's brother. So what weight class did he fight at? Right. So, uh, you know, he's a guy that's built himself up over time. I don't think he's physically you know, so much superior to, to Charlo. So, uh, uh, again, I, 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 I think it's going to be a tremendous competitive fight. I expect fireworks and um Charlo, I, like I said, I've seen him many, many times in Ronnie's gym with with Ayers Lamara, and he's a very, very, very talented guy. And, you know, obviously the experience that he gained from Ronnie being under a Hall of Fame trainer, things of that nature. So don't count him out, that's for sure. No doubt about it. Bob, greatly appreciate the analysis. Look forward to having more of a conversation with you. But now this man, um, you know, we've talked about him being such a staple in the Washington, D.C., Baltimore area. And now with what he's been able to do with Gervonta Davis, especially after beating Ryan Garcia, I gave this man his flowers, quote unquote, a long time ago. But now I feel like the world is finally giving him his flowers because he deserves it. It's been a long time coming. This man knows his boxing, is a student of the game, breaking down the X's and O's, much like that of Ronnie Shields and Bob Santos and also Robert Garcia coming up. Please welcome Baltimore's finest, Calvin Ford. Calvin, how are you, my friend? Hey, man, I'm doing fine, man. It's an honor, man, to be sitting around all these great coaches right here, man, because I remember when I was coming up in the game, just watching them do their work, man, and all of them have been brilliant of doing what they're doing and whatnot, man. So I appreciate this opportunity here and, you know, just looking forward to just, you know, break it down uh, of this big, huge fight that's about to happen again and whatnot. Now, Calvin, with this fight, I want to look at it from a Canelo standpoint, you know, because you heard Bob break down Jermel Charlo, Ronnie breaking it down, you know, from the Jermel standpoint. But I feel like coming into this fight that Canelo Alvarez is motivated uh, once again because he's been and you know this. I mean, all you guys know when you train your high level fighters and they're having big fight after big fight and they have a guy that they're supposed to beat, they may not be as motivated in this particular case, there is an animosity. There is a great deal of respect between Canelo and Charlo. But do you think that Canelo Alvarez comes out as motivated as ever and really wants to come back, especially into the Premier Boxing Champions banner, to make a statement as to say, well, people are talking about Terrence Crawford being pound for pound best. But that was my mantle for a while. And, you know, not to borrow a phrase out of Roy Jones Jr., but y'all must have forgot. Is that what you think Canelo's thinking? Well, um, you know, Canelo, he's changing up a few things, but he's going back to what made him got there and whatnot. Um, and then, you know, fighting one of the elite guys, the Charlo guys. Um, this fight he's been asking for, the Charlo's been asking for. They didn't let the business get in front of it. Um, um, the loss that he came off, um, I think he's very, very motivated. You know what I'm saying, and that mental has a lot to do with a lot of things going into a fight. 
So both of them, man, I mean, I, I, I salute both of them, man, making this fight happen and whatnot. So I'm waiting to see, you know, what the camp did or doing when the day of the fight get there, you know, because that's very important. That camp plays a, a big factor on a big fight. I greatly appreciate it, Calvin, and look forward to, again, coming back to you to get more analysis. But now, and Robert, before we get to you, if you could turn your you know, phone uh, horizontally. But this man, the Ring Magazine 2011 Trainer of the Year, 2012 BWAA Trainer of the Year, former trainer of Mikey Garcia, Abner Mates, and a host of others. I mean, he's literally a high-level prize fighter, former world champion. Now, we know the lineage of the famed Garcia family, and this man has been at the forefront of that for many, many years. Please welcome Robert Garcia. Robert, how are you, and and how amped up are you for September 30th? You, again, are a fan of the sport, not only a trainer. You know what? Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. You know, uh, being around all these great trainers, you know, just want to send my shout-outs to everybody. You know, we have nothing but respect uh, to each other, and it's always been great. If it's competing against each other or just cheering on each other, it's fun. You know, I, I love this this sport, and uh, I know we all love it. You know what? Um, yeah, I can't wait for this fight, man. It's 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 going to be uh, one of those challenges for Canelo that he needs to be in his top, you know, shape. Uh, we know Charlo is moving up two divisions, but like everybody's been saying, you know, he's not he's not smaller. He's as big, maybe even bigger than Canelo. Canelo was also a, a 154-pounder at one time. So, you know, I don't see much of a, of a difference. I'm pretty sure when it comes to fight night, they're probably going to be weighing up around the same the same, the same, same weight because I'm pretty sure Charlo jumps up in weight after after he makes weight. So it's interesting. You know, I think it's going to be a very competitive fight. Won't, uh, won't be a, bit, a mismatch. Uh, you know, so I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm very excited. Now, Robert, with this fight from a trainer's standpoint, it, it would appear as if, you know, when you look at it and people are saying, oh, you know, Canelo is a naturally bigger guy. But when what I see on, on social media, the little bit that I see out of Canelo training with Eddie Reynoso, I don't think Canelo's taking this fight lightly. I think he realizes he has a very dangerous opponent in front of him. And I think that they are preparing this as if you have to be on your best at all times because Jermel Charlo does have power, does have speed, and can get it done in a variety of different ways. Yeah, Canelo, you know what, Canelo, from what I understand, I've never been in his gym or to see him train, but I know everybody says and everybody that's been around, you know, tells us that he's one of the hardest working men they've ever seen. So he works hard. But let's not forget that, you know, we've seen those type of videos in his previous fights also, where he hasn't looked that great in his last couple of fights. So, you know, it's a big difference from showing a video, of, you know, 30-second video, working hard to act the actual fight. You know, uh, his last couple of fights, that's, that's, that's the only thing that I have, that I have, uh, that I have to say that I give Charlo a big chance because Canelo hasn't looked that good in his last fights. I know he said, you know, there was a few injuries, a few personal problems drink camps. So let's let's uh let's hope that is the case. Uh because uh I know I want to see a great competitive fight and uh and we will, you know, the uh, the question is is Canelo gonna be better than he's than he has in his last couple of fights? Because Charlo will be. Charlo's a, a a fighter. Charlo is is one of those guys that is not gonna hold back. He's not gonna uh you know take 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 too many punches. He's gonna fight. he's gonna fight back. So let's see what Canelo brings. You know, I think it's gonna be a very very close fight, very competitive. Before I turn it over to the media, I want to go quickly. I got two questions for the panel, and then I will turn it over to Mitch from Showtime and questions from the media. Uh, Ronnie, I will start with you. Uh, do you think we get the best Canelo Alvarez on September thirtieth, or the best Canelo Alvarez we've seen in recent memory? Absolutely. Look, I think, you know, from his last two showings, he said he had injuries. You got to believe that. And I just feel that, look, he wants to prove that he, he ever lost a step. And, you know, and he's, he's a competitor. So that's what he does. You know, he wants, you know, he wants to keep the crowd going. You know, he wants people to stay behind him. 
So he's going to be in the best shape he's probably ever been in in a long time. And he knows he has to do it because Jamel Charlo is coming to fight. Jamel Charlo is one of the few fighters that I've seen in a long time that holds his power throughout the fight. You don't get that in a lot of fighters. But Canelo also is that guy also. He holds his power really well to the end. So it's going to be a great fight, and I can't wait to see it. We talk about Charlo having his power late. I think you look at the fight that he had against Brian Castagna the first time. Yes. And James, his trainer, was telling him, you need these next few rounds. And he dug deep, and his back was against the wall, and he proved it. Oh, absolutely. You know, look, Jamil is a hard trainer, always has worked hard. And, you know, nothing, is, nothing has changed with him as far as I can see. You know, he's going to he's gonna be his best, and he's going to continue to be his best. And people keep out in two-way divisions. Look, he's a naturally big guy, simple as that, who struck, he not struggle to make weight, but he does it the right way. And when you do it the right way, you know, you don't struggle to do it. So, you know, he's going to be a natural 168-pounder that night. I suspect he would probably win about 64, 65. But the night of the fight, I surely expect him to be about 175. Wow. Unbelievable. Some amazing, you know, information from Roddy Shields. Bob, do you anticipate the best Canelo Alvarez we've seen in a while? I think people look at his career, and yeah, he's been fighting for about 15 years. I think he turned pro 15, 16, but he's still only 31 years of age. Sure. Yeah, he turned pro, obviously, early on in Mexico. Um, I'm going to reiterate what uh, Robert Garcia said. I have been around uh, Canelo up in Big Bear, and the guy does work tremendously hard. I mean, when I, when I was around him, you know, I was always focused up there in Abel Sanchez's gym up at the summit. So the guy works tremendously hard. And I think he actually has a chip on his shoulder, right? I, I, I do believe him about the injuries. I think he has a chip on his shoulder. I don't, you know, I'm going to take the uh, rider fight with a grain of salt. And the reason I'm saying that, I've been around so many uh, uh, world-class fighters around Ronnie, his gym, and guys like that. No matter what guys say, it's hard to get motivated sometimes when you're not fighting the elite guy. I don't care what they say. They can say whatever they want to say. But when you're fighting an elite guy, you know your career's on the line. You're going to turn it up. He knows what kind of a, a dangerous opponent Charlo is. Um, from what I'm hearing, that he's even going up to Lake Tahoe, up to the uh, elevation up there. So that tells me breaking camp in San Diego for the first time in a long time that he's going to leave no stone unturned for this fight. And uh, so I'm expecting the best uh, Canelo for this for this fight. So uh, and Charlo better be ready. And as I know, he will be because I've seen him around Ronnie. Like I said, I've seen Charlo too many times in Ronnie's gym with Laura. And, and the type of work that they had put in, so I know he leaves no stone unturned. It's going to be it's going to be a lot better fight than I think people think for as long as it lasts. For as long as it lasts. So wait, hold on a minute, Bob. You don't think it's going to go, or you think the judges will not be needed here? I, 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 I I'm not thinking so. I, 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 I think somebody's going to get stopped. I'm not going to say who. You know, I like both guys. Um, I, 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 I think whoever ma- makes a little bit more the the the, the most mistakes as the fight uh, uh, progresses on, and that that's going to be the guy that's going to be victorious, and who's going to be able to capitalize on that. Well, check that. 33 years old for Canelo Alvarez, but still, he's not. He's on the front end of 30, not the back end of 30. Calvin, uh, I want to ask you, you're not used to going to the scorecards with your man, Gervonta Davis. You know what it's like to put people away and, and not have it go to the scorecards. Do you agree with Bob's assessment that, you know, will it go or will the judges not be needed on September 30th with Canelo and Charlo on Showtime pay-per-view 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time? Like Bob said, both of them got a chip on their shoulder. I mean, Canelo, man. Um, he changed his training, his training up. He went up to Big Bear. You know, usually he don't do certain things. You know, he's doing something there. He see how big this fight is. And Charlo, he want to win. You know what I'm saying? This would be setting a big statement if he pull this one off. You know what I'm saying? Um, Canelo, he, he's he's on the throne right now. He's he's the throne leader. Um, do he want to give that up? You know what I'm saying? So, like like Bob said, somebody is going to sleep that night because both of them got power. Like uh, um, Ronnie said, Charlo big, he's a big boy. You know what I'm saying? He's a big boy, and he can punch too. So somebody going to get it. It's just, like I said, 
how well champ is, how well they execute their game plan. It's going to be a good fight. It's going to be the fight that we've been looking for, that roller coaster ride. You know what I'm saying? And I can't wait. Calvin, now, when you're training, you know, your fighters, and, and obviously Tank is one of the most electrifying fighters on the planet today, uh, as Tank was coming up, do you like being uh, the hunter or do you like being the hunted? So Canelo right now, you mentioned about how he's on the top of the throne. Everyone's hunting for Canelo. Yeah. Jamal, Char Jamal Charlo is, you know, he's the one now going up and chasing Canelo and wants to prove he's the man. Which style of philosophy do you prefer to be in as a trainer? Would you rather be Eddie Reynoso with the guy who's at the top, or would you rather be Derek James, a guy who is hunting the top guy, and you guys are set for a collision course? Well, it's based on the individual. I like Charlo um, view. You know what I'm saying? Because he got nothing to lose. You know what I'm saying? If he going in with that attitude, I ain't got nothing to lose, he can be victorious. Um, but like I said, Canelo, he's the throne keeper right now. You know what I'm saying? And if he like that spot, you know, guys that like that spot and they enjoy that spot and they're holding that spot, they still in that spot. And he have a point to prove, can he keep that spot? You know, only person I see that's not undefeated is all the time. And, you know, when you gave him his age, he right at the peak, not going uh, uh, far the time where he hit him, but he's at his peak that he's that guy. You know what I'm saying? So this is a big test for Charlo. You know what I'm saying? But again, when you look at Canelo's last previous performance, it didn't look like itself, but he changed camp up. So uh, he's really taking this fight really seriously. Robert, from your standpoint, do you think that Canelo Alvarez, I mean, this guy has money to last him, I don't know how many generations, but do you feel like he has been at least paying attention a little bit because he is a student of the game. He loves the sport of boxing. It's in his blood. He has demonstrated that time and time again that he's hearing some people that are saying, does Canelo still have it? Do you think that he pays any attention to that? Do you think it aggravates him? And do you think that he's going to use that as bulletin board material to try to come out and put on a dazzling performance against Jamal Charlo or Jamal Charlo on September 30th? I, I really think he, he does listen, but I know he also feels it. You know what? Uh, I'm a for, former fighter, and, and comes a time where you could train as hard as you can, and you could have your best camp ever. You could choose the best training camp uh, uh, location. But if your body is already tired, your body's already uh, had so many years of camps, so many years of diets, so many years of beatings in the mm -hmm. gym, your body's not gonna your body's not gonna respond as well. You know, I think he will be in, in, in great shape. Maybe training as hard as he's ever trained, but when the bell rings. He's, he's already had 18 years as a professional fighter. So I don't think he will have his best performance. Do I think he still performs well? Yes, I still think, I, I still pick him to win the fight, but I'm definitely sure it's not going to be easy because Charlo is a, a, a true warrior, a true fighter, and I wouldn't be surprised if Charlo pulls it off, honestly. How hmm. big of a win would this be, Robert, if Jermel Charlo pulls off this victory against Canelo Alvarez to become a two-time undisputed champion, did it at 54, and now would be doing it at 168. You know what? It would be so, so huge for for himself, for his career, for, for boxing itself, because we we need those type of fights. You know, I'm, I'm so glad, you know, we, we've been having those type of fights lately with, with people unifying, with undisputed champions moving up in weight. I can't, you know, this is the best time for boxing. You know, I think I think we've had uh, such a great year and it's just getting better and better. You know, I, I you know, I'm really happy that that I'm, I'm part of what's going on right now in, in boxing. Uh, Charlo pull, pulling this up. It's going to be huge. It'll be, for him, obviously, the biggest win of his career. But in boxing itself, you know, moving up two divisions. And we're, we're talking about two divisions where we have quite a few weight to, weight uh, pounds. Uh, you know, in smaller weight classes, two divisions, you know, three divisions could be five or six pounds. We're talking about, you know, a lot of pounds. So it, it's a big difference moving up two divisions from 154 to 168. 
you know, compared to smaller weight classes. So it, it would be a great win. You know, it, it's something that we don't see often. And uh, I'll be, you know, really, really happy for him if he if he does, because he he has what it takes to do it. Well, greatly appreciate it, Robert. And to, sort of to piggyback <laughs> off of what Robert said, I mean, what a year we've had here in 2023. And it's obviously, you look at Premier Boxing Champions with Cervante Davis's win over Ryan Garcia, Terrence Crawford's victory over Errol Spence to become the only undisputed welterweight champion in the four belt era. Now we get Canelo and Charlo. Premier Boxing Champions on Showtime pay-per-view are number one in the game by far. And if you want to know, just look at the numbers. Now I will turn it over to Mitch Abramson, our esteemed moderator. If you have questions, raise your hand and then direct your question to the individual trainer that you have set question for. Mitch, it's all you. Thanks so much, Ray. I appreciate it. Um, great conversation here, guys. Let's kick things off with Keith Eidick from Boxing Scene. Keith, go ahead. Thanks, Mitch. Uh, my first question is for Ronnie. Ronnie, obviously, you're very familiar with Jermel and have trained against Canelo. Can you tell us how Charlo can beat and, and what he needs to do to beat Canelo in this fight? Well, first of all, I know he's going to be in great shape because he always is. He, you know, he he takes it as pride. He takes pride in training and I know he's going to be in great shape. But what he has to do is he has to make every round not be close. You know, every round that he wins. You're not going to win close rounds against the Canelo Alvarez. Simple as that. When I had Everslande and Laurel, I know we had a couple close rounds. But, you know, we just knew we had to keep pushing because we know we're not going to get close rounds. But with Canelo, you know, Canelo is not the, hard, it's not the easiest guy to hit. The guy has great defense, and I know he works on it every single day. So, Charlo, you know, he has to be in great shape from the beginning to the end. He has to push this fight. He has to, you know, let his hands go and not be there for the return. And with Canelo, Canelo, like I said, you know, his defense is really good. You know, he moves his head and then he counters back really well. So, this is going to be a great fight, man. But I just think Charlo. You know, him being, what, a year older or a year younger uh, than, than Canelo, he, you know, with him, you know, he's going to be in shape. So he's going to throw punches. And as I stated earlier, he gets stronger as the fight goes on. So oh. that's going to be a problem for Canelo. If, the, if this is a close fight and it goes into the later rounds, you know, Charlo is going to be there and he's not going anywhere. Ronnie, do you feel that he can hurt Canelo because Canelo has obviously shown a granite chin throughout his career? Yes, he has. A, he has a good chin. He does. He has that. But you know, the old saying: "You kill the body, the head will die." Charlo has to go to the body. You don't see a lot of fighters going to Canelo's body, and because you know they have to get close enough to do it, so they're going to have to devise a scheme to where he can get in some body shots and possibly, you know just wet Canelo down just a little bit so he can hit him on top. And Ronnie, do you feel that he can win? I, I, you've been in this position and you've been on the wrong end of a fight that you felt that Erislandi Lara won. Yeah. Uh, can you, and Bivol might have won nine or ten rounds and still almost, you know, the fight was close on the cards. I guess what right. I'm asking, can you beat Canelo in Vegas on the scorecards? Well, that's, that's, that's the biggest problem. And, you know, but the thing about it is, you know, going in, you can't think about it. You can't think that. You know, you just got to go out there and he just have to go out and win rounds. And let, you know, look, let the people judge it. People are always good at judging these fights. So let the people judge it. You know, look, man, you know, we. I just hope we have three of the best uh, judges that whoever wins deserves to win. And this, you know, people, some people are going to agree on some rounds and some people are not going to agree around. But Charlo, he has to just not think about, you know, with the judges, what, what are they, how are they scoring on this fight? That's the last thing should be on the fighter's mind. He should just concentrate on what they're doing in the gym and you let that incorporate in the fight and just do it that way. And if he, if people think he's, he, he's won the fight, then he's going to get the accolades for that. Okay. 
Ronnie, I appreciate your time as always. And uh, I don't want to hog all the time here. So I'll just ask Bob, Bob, we're not going to let you off the hook. Who's winning by knockout? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, honestly, I can, in all seriousness, I can envision e each guy capitalizing on something to get the job done because there's been times I've seen Canelo get a little bit gassed in the triple G fights. I know the type of work that Charlo puts in. I expect him to have a tremendous gas tank as, as, as Ronnie said, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm really not, I'm really not sure. It, it, you know, if you, you, you put a gun to my head, do I think Canelo's probably going to be victorious in this fight? Yes. But, uh, it wouldn't surprise me that Charlo stopped him or he or, or he stopped Charlo. I, I wouldn't be surprised e e either way. So, like I said, who's going to capitalize on whose mistakes? I like Charlo, the fact that a lot of times he's, he's punching, you know, uh, very straight, direct. Um, I mean, I, like I said, I used to watch him with Ronnie so many times working the pads and the technique that they work with. And and I could see him catching uh, sometimes Canelo, you know, banging to the body with that left hook, catching him with some good straight punches and stuff like that. So if he buzzed Canelo or hurt Canelo or, or got him out of there, I wouldn't be surprised. But um, I, I, I think somebody's getting stopped. You know what I mean? I, I, that's what I think. I don't I don't know who, but I think somebody's getting stopped that night. Bob, I appreciate your uh, perspective on everything. And my last question, Calvin, I just wanted to throw it to you for a second. Calvin, what do you, do you think uh, someone's getting stopped in this fight, or how how do you look at it? Both from big punches, man. Both from big punches, and uh, Charlo have something to prove. Canelo have something to prove. Um, it's just the thing, like he said, that uh, Canelo's defense strong, um, and he just had to stay on him. So I had to really, really, really stay on him and, and really push the button, push the button. You know, somebody got to take a chance. And that's the way we're going to see the knockout. So, again, if both of them fighters go out there and execute, we're going to see a great night that night. We're, we're going to get on that roller coaster that we're looking for. Great. Thanks for that, Keith. Uh, thanks, guys. Let's now go to Alan Dawson, the longtime combat sports writer. Alan, uh, go ahead with the question. Let us know which media outlet you are speaking for. Hi, Hype and uh, Probox TV. Uh, I want to thank all the coaches for joining. Really great to get all your insights. Um, Leonard Ellaby put a question out on Twitter recently about where Jamel Charlo could rank in the pound for pound list should he leapfrog an entire division and beat the undisputed champion uh, in another weight class. So I'm curious where you all would rank him uh, if, if Jamel were to, to win uh, on September 30th, whether that's top 10. I know some outlets don't even have Jamel on the top 10 yet, top five, maybe even number one. You know, Robert Garcia kind of mentioned, you know, how big the win could be. But, you, you know, how, how big could the win be for, for Jamel when it comes to pound for pound? Who's that question for, Alan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe all of the coaches, but maybe, maybe Robert to start with, because he, he uh, I mean, uh, started I'll start. the conversation earlier. Okay, I'll start. You know what? I, I think the, the, the win would be so big that I, I'll put him right behind uh, Terrence Crawford. I still think Terrence Crawford will be number one, but yeah. I'll put him right, right behind him, number two. Yeah, good call. I'm Calvin. second at two. I'm second at reason why. And that's the thing that get me with the, with the ranking. If somebody do something that somebody ain't done, and, and it's a significant win, and the, the, the public going forward, and it's, it's it's making it's pushing boxing forward, he should be there. I mean, you look at the the win, the um um Spence and um uh, what's the name had he, that was something great that he done, you know. So what Robbie just said, I, I agree with him one hundred percent, and puts him right up there with. <clears throat> Thanks, Kevin. Ronnie, would you have him number one? Yes. I, I don't know if I would put him number one. I'd probably be like these guys, and I would say number two. Because, yeah. you know, you got to give Crawford his props right now. Yeah. You know, such a big fight. But, and you know, and for guys in a prime, you know, so I would have to say number two behind yeah. Crawford. Is it a clean sweep, Bob? Do you think number two as well? No, I, I, for me, I put Charlo, if he wins this, I put him number one to be undisputed, uh, you know, uh, going across, like I said, from 54 to 68. I understand, you know, everybody considers Spence maybe a little bit more in his prime than Canelo, but Spence never, did, you know, he hasn't accomplished what Canelo did at that level. 
Um, and uh, so for me, if he goes out there and he beats Canelo w- with everything that Canelo's accomplished and uh, in the magnitude of the event, I don't think there's any bigger fish in, in the sport right now than Canelo. I think he, he he's the king. He's the mantle. He's carrying everything right now. You know, he, he he's the bus driver driving the bus. And so if he goes out there and he wins that fight, um definitely to 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 me charlo becomes pound for pound number one and i have obviously uh crawford just a hair underneath mm. Perfect. Just, Thank a you. Hair. <laughs> just a hair just a hair and, and just so you know calvin i i got gervonta way high on my pound for pound list too Thank i think he's right Thank in you. i appreciate too. that I appreciate a lot of people don't that. have that but for me I have him there right now, right there, too, in that that top two or three. I appreciate that. But like I said again, um, when you look at Crawford, he did some amazing. You, you got a good point about uh, Canelo with his accolades that he had. You get what I'm saying? But Charlo ain't on the, the pound for pound. Crawford was already mentioned in that pound for pound. That's why I kept him at number one, because he did something great. You know, I, I'm gonna, we're gonna have to debate that pound for pound list because I, I don't know what's going on here. Javante be way higher for me yeah. than all these other guys because I, I got see him twice. I got and and, and cool. how Charlo's not on that pound for pound list, I, I'm befuddled. You know yeah. how you executed that 154 and you're not you're not the top three. Uh, I don't know. We got some guys on pound for pound list. They don't fight but once every four years. But I, yeah, I got yeah, <laughs> good good argument. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Alan. Appreciate the uh, question. Let's next go to Cole Whiston. Cole Whiston. Cole, uh, let us know where you're calling from. Thanks. Hi, guys. Coming from Boxing World Weekly in Canada. And I'll start with Ronnie Shields because you've obviously worked very closely with uh, Jermel Charlo. And I want to know, because of the jump up in weight, I know everybody's saying that Charlo, uh, size-wise, will probably be very comparable to Canelo on fight night, which I agree with, but he still has never competed at that level. And now he's going up against a pound for pound top five fighter in the world. So what would you put the odds on Charlo winning this fight? Look, I think he has a great chance, man. I, I you know, I think I give him a 50, 50 chance to win this fight. You know, uh, look in the gym, you spar with guys that's heavier than you all the time in the gym. So it's not something that, He's not used to doing it. You know, he's going to have big guys that he's going to spar with. Always do. You know, you, you never go and say, I'm going to get a smaller guy to work on speed or whatever. You're not going to do that. He's going to spar with bigger guys that he's already been used to sparring with. He's always got something that he's not used to. His weight is his weight. I mean, it is what it is. You know, he's, you know, he, he gets up to probably, you know, 170. I would think about 170, you know, to get down to 154. That's a, that's natural for him to go into a, a seven, eight week camp, and he, then he gets to weigh it off. This camp, he's not going to have that problem with you know trying to get down to a weight. You know, I mean, he's going to have to lose maybe five pounds if that, you know, to to stay at the at the level where he's already at normally in the gym. So it's not going to be a surprise to him. That makes sense. Thank you, Ronnie. My next question. Is for, my next question is for Calvin, uh, mainly because obviously training Gervonta, you're used to training a guy fighting uh, bigger opponents. Gervonta, of course, uh, has the one punch power, and that is the great equalizer. Do you think Jermel Charlo at 168 needs to have that ability or come close to having that one punch power to be able to win this fight, Calvin? No, I don't think so. Like Ronnie said, like. It's easy. Dr. Nash working on skills. Just working on the fight. He ain't got to worry about cutting weight. You know, I mean, um, I had some fights this pre- um, previous that I, I learned from, right? You know, you know, fighters want to do weight cut different and stuff. You know, and my method is like, yo, you need to get on top of that early so you can be at that weight, stronger at that weight. You know what I'm saying? Instead of trying to get low at, at a weight cut. So, like I said, Charlo got a great chance of doing something great. You know what I'm saying? Um, like that's why I say I'd love to be in his position being hunting, you know what I'm saying? Because Canelo was there, you know. Um, like we said again, he had injuries, you know what I'm saying? Let's hope that everything is good and he's ready for this fight. But looking at how he's changed up everything, he's taking this fight serious. 
Thanks for that, Cole. Appreciate it. Um, reminder again, if you have a question, please raise your hand. Let's go next to Jim Conlon. Jim, please let us know where you're calling from. Jim Condon from RCB Radio Sport Ireland. Uh, my first question is for Ronnie. I suppose, Ronnie, when we look at uh, Canelo in terms of his recent performances and we probably look back on the loss against Bivol, as a trainer, would you see anything in that loss against Bivol that would excite you for Charlo? Yeah, absolutely. I think, but, you know, again, you know, we don't know what, what Canelo we're going to get in this fight. But, you know, but I think you have to go back and you have to look at things that Canelo was able to do and things that Bavo was able to do against him. And the same as with Ryder. You know, he couldn't put Ryder away. Ryder was there for the whole fight. You know, he was there to be hit. But Canelo obviously said he had an injury and you have to believe that. So, but I think Charlo just has to be himself in this fight. You know, he can't be any. He, he could take away certain things from both fights, from, from both Canelo's last two fights, but he has to incorporate what he's been doing to get him to, at, to the undisputed, you know, junior middleweight champion of the world. And he has to do things that got him there. And so you're going to see him using his jab the way he does and throwing combinations and stepping around. He can't stand and just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Canelo. That's not his fight. And my second question then is for Calvin. Calvin, if you look at uh, Charlo's resume there in terms of his victories, if you're Canelo looking at that, is there any particular fights that you would have been impressed with in terms of Charlo that would make you stand up and take notice there of recent uh, Charlo successes that you might hone in on and say, yeah, that that was a good opponent that he put away? Yeah, um, like again, um, Canelo defense, man. You know, his defense, do he still got the legs to do what he's been doing to, to get him where he at? Um, looking at some stuff that uh, Charlo been doing over the years, um, he's a vet. He's 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 seen everything. You know, he, he got years in. Um, is Canelo um, worrying about, what he, is he going to do anything? No, he's going to be Canelo. You know what I'm saying? It's just he know this is a big fight. This is a big fight right here, you know? And um, Charlo, he knows it's a big fight. So, like I said, I like his position where he at. Uh, Canelo just had to just Canelo just had to focus on what he had to do. You know what I'm saying because Charlo might change some things up that 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 that, that he see that other fighters wasn't doing against him. And my final question for Bob, uh, Bob, if you're in the corner and you're the trainer of uh, Charlo, would you have him dictate the pace in the first two rounds? to quicken the pace right from the off to maybe to go 100 miles an hour at sort of Canelo and maybe get him off in his back foot early on? Or would you think that play a bit of cat and mouse and feel yourself in to the fight in the early rounds? Well, obviously the first round we all know is the most dangerous round in boxing. So we got to be, we got to be a little, little bit cautious there, but give him a little bit of lateral movement. But uh, I, I would like to see Charlo control the, uh, the center of the ring. I think Charlo's got a, uh, I've, like I said, I'll say it again. I've seen him many, many times with Ronnie. I think they did a tremendous jo uh, job, Ronnie did, in, in developing him a tremendous jab. So when I would watch him with Laura, the guy's got a, a tremendous jab. And I and I would expect, like I said, give a little bit of lateral movement early on. And then from that point on, I'd like to control from the center of the ring and dictate everything off of that. Uh, you know, I, I love the uh, uh, Charlo's combination punching, and I love and I love how everything is just right down the pipe, direct. And he, and I think he could catch uh, uh, Canelo when he's digging with that left hook to the body and things of that nature. So that that that's how I would play it. Thanks for that, Jim. Appreciate it. Um, let's go next to uh, James Bell. James, let us know where you're calling from. Thanks. All right, there. This is James Bell of the Boxing Source, and uh, this first question is for Robert Garcia. Um, you know, we're talking about you know this fight here between uh, Canelo and Charlo, but you know, since we you know have these great trainers here, you also got to think about those third eyes out there and the trainers with Eddie Reynoso and also with Derek James. Uh, given this is like a big stage that both you know, trainers have been in before, like, how is it to kind of, like, make those adjustments in this type of a stage where it's, like, a Super Bowl or, like, a national championship in football in comparison? 
you know what, it, it's, it's, it's a challenge for both of them. And they're both great trainers. I think uh, they're both experienced enough uh, to to do what, what they do best. Uh, I think uh, Eddie Reynoso, being that he's been able to compete uh, against some of the best fighters in the world with all his fighters, because, you know, he has quite a few fighters. He's experienced uh, taking losses uh, before. Uh, Derek James' only only loss was recently with, with Spence. So I think for him, it was his first time uh, with the big stable that he has. It was the big first time that he really took a loss the way, the way it happened. So uh, I, I got to say, you know, the more experience in these cases, it has to go to Eddie Reynoso. But uh, but this was a great learning experience for for uh, for James. So I think this is gonna just make him so much better. I think they're, they're pretty even in both uh, both uh, when it comes to tr the training camps, the game plans that if they have to adjust during the fight. I think they're both pretty close. It's, that's why it, it makes it such a such an interesting fight, and it's such a close fight that it's really hard to pick a winner. You know, it's it's, it's going to be one of those fights where both Trainers do their best. Fighters obviously are going to do their best. So that's why, you know, we can't wait. It's going to be such a great fight. Now, uh, we have the next question here for Coach Calvin. Coach Calvin, you did mention uh, there with Canelo that he's, you know, training, you know, having a different training regimen in this particular stage, you know, given what's on the line and, you know, what's given in the past. Like, um, what do you think that like is that like a major factor given his past few fights it that is. he's had that moniker that he's kind of tired in the second half of the fights while in comparison Jamel Charlo kind of like picks up in the second half of fights I mean sometimes in, in camps when you've been in the same situation for so many years it's just the same thing it's like when a person go to work and they go to the same job all the time they get bored with the job for him making that change that's major that's major so he's really taking this fight serious you know what I'm saying um, like we talked about the injuries that he had the previous fight, he got past all of them. Um, we're gonna see a Canelo in his prime. We're gonna see a Canelo that really put that work in because he know what he got to stand in front of. So it's major that you know he they did some changes. Um, piggybacking off of Garcia, both of them had losses, but Derek just had a loss. And then when I, a, a trainer come off a loss, man, he got something to prove. You know what I'm saying? Because this is a major. It's like the Super Bowl. This is a major fight. This is a major fight. It's just based on what athlete is going to go out there and perform the way they're supposed to perform from camp. All right. Thanks so much, James. We're going to end things with Cam Buford. Cam, let us know where you're calling from. Uh, Cameron Buford, Los Angeles News Observer. Um, Mr. Shields, would you touch on the maturity of Jamal uh, Charlo? that he's shown over the uh, recent years and how does that play into the um, fight inside the ring? I think for Jamel, yes, he's improved. As, as you can see in his last few fights, you know, he's really, you know, as late in fights, he's coming on later in fights because he has that power to, to do it. And, you know, the kid is always in shape. You know, he trains really hard, man. And, you know, in, in this fight, you know, he has to understand that, he can't, you know, he can't give Canelo accolades as far as saying, okay, I'm fighting Canelo Alvarez. No, you got to, he got to block all of that out and just, it's another guy in front of me. And I just have to roll over him the way I've been rolling over everybody late in fights. And he just got to be himself. And once he just be himself, trust me, he's going to, he's going to do really great in this fight. And I really believe he has an opportunity to win. And he he just have to stay focused. And normally it's hard to for this guy to get away from being focused. I mean, he's really studies fights. He's really studies the opponents, and that's a great thing. You know, not every fighter studies you know the opponent, but this guy he does, and he's going to know everything about Canelo. So I give him a great shot in this fight, and he just got to keep his head and just keep doing what got him the way he is right now. All right. Thanks so much, Cam. And that's going to conclude our, our media session of this uh, call. Thanks so much to the reporters for the great questions. And I'm going to send it right now back to Ray. Thank you very much, Mitch. And before I get ready to let these illustrious trainers go, 
I'm guys. It's I know we've heard Bob talk about it, that he feels like there's going to be a stoppage somewhere along the lines, but I'm now going to hold your feet to the fire. It is official prediction time. However you want to go. This is on the record, gentlemen. You know, now it's not just as we like to say barbershop talk. We're going on the record. I'll start off with the illustrious Ronnie Shields, Ronnie Canelo, Charlo, undisputed versus undisputed, September 30, the Showtime pay-per-view, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time, presented by Premier Boxing Champions, promoted by Canelo Promotions, TGB Promotions. Ronnie Shields, your prediction for September 30th. I'm going to say Jamel Charlo, best split decision. Wow, yeah. Jamel Charlo by split decision. Sam Jackson's putting out those quotes right now as we speak. <laughs> All right, Roddy, we appreciate the time. Bob Santos, one way or another, what is your for official prediction, sir? Wow. Can, can, uh, <laughs> can I not get one? Can I just stay neutral here? A draw? A draw? Wow. <laughs> no, we have a split no, decision. I, no, no. We have a draw. Um, Again, I won't be surprised if Charlo wins. Uh, I, I'm expecting a, a stoppage. I won't be surprised I either way, but I'm, I'm kind of 55, 45 leaning towards uh, uh, Canelo. All right. So we got a split decision. Oh, you, so you have a what, – what is it, Bob? I have Canelo. Okay. So we got Jermel Charlo, split decision, Ronnie Shields. Bob, you got Canelo Alvarez by how again? I think somebody getting knocked out, and I'm not even sure if it's going to be Canelo or Charlo, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? But if you're putting it to me, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Canelo. If I had to go down to the casino, people, and they said, boy, you got to put that bank account on it, Santos, I said, God dang, I, I'm probably going to go uh, with, with Canelo 55-45. But I – I'm expecting a stoppage one way or the other. I'm just not sure. All right. Now, Calvin Ford, illustrious oh. trainer, uh, Gervonta <laughs> Davis, a man who's not used to going to the cards. As I like to say, his fighters like to put people away. The judges don't necessarily have the verdict in their hands. Calvin, how do you see it between Canelo and Charlo? Somebody going to sleep. I don't know which one, but that <laughs> one, somebody getting going to sleep. Both of them, man. <laughs> I just tell you, but type somebody going to sleep. If you want to bet, bet on somebody going to sleep at this point. <laughs> yeah, bet on the knockout. Yeah, bet, bet on, on the knockout. knockout. I don't know which way. <laughs> bet on the knockout. Don't know which one, but bet on the knockout. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just to revise, split decision, Ronnie Shields, Charlo. Uh, it sounds like Bob's saying Canelo by stoppage, but it's not going the distance. Calvin said it's not going to full 12 rounds. Robert Garcia, to end this call and have like a bit of a tiebreaker, how do you see the fight going down between Canelo and Charlo? It's a tough, it's a very, very tough pick. Uh, but, uh, you know, if, if Canelo wins by knockout, I think it would be under eight rounds. Late rounds, uh, I think he slows down. I think he tires out. And late rounds is where, is where, uh, Charlo could actually stop Canelo. I think. That's how I'm seeing it, Robert. That's exactly how I'm seeing it. You, you, okay, good, good. I think if, if it's a late, a late stoppage, it would be in favor of Charlo. But uh, Canelo's got great power also. Canelo, Canelo could not come out cold. Uh, but, man, if it goes a distance, I'd say, I'd say uh, Canelo by decision. If it goes the distance, you're saying Canelo by decision? Yes. Close fight. Very close fight. All right. Well, gentlemen, Ronnie Shields, Bob Santos, Calvin Ford, Robert Garcia, thank you for educating us on the sport of boxing. That's how great this fight is. Gentlemen, we look forward to seeing you over the next couple of weeks. Thank you so much for all the media for joining us. Undisputed, Canelo versus Charlo, September 30th. Showtime pay-per-view, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time from T-Mobile Arena. Tickets are available. They're going quickly, ASS.com. PBC on Showtime, number one in the game and make Ooh. it still late. Thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your week. We'll talk to you in a few weeks' time. All right, guys. Thank, Thank you, guys. Everybody. Great having you, guys. Thank you, guys. Take it easy. Thank you all. What up, YouTube family? Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Help us get to that million subscribers. We're on the road to a million. And obviously, we have other great content on our Patreon channel. So since this video is over, head on over to our Patreon and check out all the exclusive content or right here on our YouTube members.